I'm Lizzie with Longestance Gamers, and today I'm going to be talking about the 31 new games that I played this year. Usually it's a bit more, but this was kind of a slow year for me. But anyways, let's go ahead and get started. 13 minutes, the Cuban Missile Crisis. I actually wanted to play this game because I really enjoyed 13 Days. Thought that was a great game. This one was faster, so possibly better. But it just, it was missing that great tension that I got with 13 Days, and it just felt very unimaginative, exactly. So, I mean, this was 3 out of 10. Not great, but moving on. So, number 30 was Droll. I love these dice cubes, so I definitely kept them and harvested them to put behind my meeple. <laughs> but, I mean, it's an okay game. Like, I would play it if I had some family time and just wanted to play a quick game that basically what you do is you get a word you draw something that represents it on the six sides you can only use the same picture twice and then everyone else tries to guess what the word is although you are drawing simultaneously so everyone's drawing on their dice at the same time and then trying to guess at the same time so it kind of moves it along on a fast pace. It was just okay. And one of my biggest letdowns is because I'm a huge Pandemic fan. I was very excited to hear that Pandemic was going to get a World of Warcraft re-theme. But it didn't quite fit for me. It just it felt like Defenders of the Realm had taken away everything good. And just left you with a chart to follow. And like you move along these charts doing pretty easy action like you just have to have the card in your hand for almost all of them without discarding so you just keep the cards in your hand and then do it it's just it just didn't really feel very good to me it wasn't very fun even on the hardest settings it was still just eh unfortunately this was kind of a miss for me which was a real big letdown because i loved pandemic so much i still love pandemic it's just this one's just not there for me. My next big disappointment is Radlands. I absolutely adore the art on this and I keep hoping that maybe with this next play I'd enjoy it more. The only time I've enjoyed playing it has been when I've drafted the starting camps. So like normal rules you have your six camps and you choose three of them on both sides because it's a two-player only game. The way I've only had fun with it is when you start with your six camps you choose one you give the others to the other player and they're doing the same until both sides have three so you're kind of going back and forth with those camps i mean i found that more fun but it's just it's just it's not like i really love magic so while there is some strategy there and it there is more strategy than it looks just some of the cards just hit me the wrong way like uh napalm is one of them that just destroys all of the enemies in one row and there's two of those in the deck. If your enemy gets them, it's an event that you have one turn to prepare for. There's not much you can do at all. I haven't seen anything that makes it so that you can just disregard someone else's event. So that's a pretty hard one to take and it's super cheap. So even with, so it's super cheap, goes off super fast and is completely destructive. And then so that I just hate when that card comes out and then the other card just there's no real oomph to the game, despite the amazing artwork. Number 27, this is definitely one that is more geared towards families with younger children. So I'm just one that likes kind of more of the complexer games now. I find that I really like Euros. And this is just, it's a fun game. It's beautiful with those chibi minis. It's just, I mean, I'm keeping it in my collection. Hopefully my nephew will play it with me one day. But for now, it's just going to be sitting there until someone that will appreciate will come into my game room. Uh, number six is Songbirds. Now this one is one that I backed on Kickstarter because Z Garcia uh, covered it and really enjoyed it. And it's a good game. I mean, it's a seven out of 10. So these are definitely gonna start escalating up now. I enjoy it. I really love the solo version of it the best. Doesn't really oomph you, doesn't really let you down, so it's kind of like one of those relaxing games that you can just play when you're just trying to zone out. Uh, number 25 is Fort. Uh, this is one where your kids having your camp or you're building a fort and so you're trying to get other kids to come play in your fort, but if you don't play with them enough they'll possibly go to the other kids. So I mean it's really interesting theme. I really enjoy it. It's just another one that you can just play just casually and have some fun with it 
So one that I would definitely play again if someone else wanted to play it with me. Uh, number 24 is Zany Penguins. So Zany Penguins kind of reminds me of Arboretum because what you get is you get these different penguins that have different powers and you're laying them down in front of you during the game, but you can only score based on the ones that are in your hand at the end. So it's a really interesting one and a cute theme. Love the special powers. It's just fun. 23 is the loop. Now this is a cool co cooperative game where you're just trying to fight against an evil scientist and you have to be careful that one of the zones doesn't get too much of those bad cubes and you just try to get the duplicates of this sky into the appropriate zones to get rid of them and then you do certain things, certain tasks and you get certain things accomplished and you have to get so many of them accomplished to be able to win the game. It's a really fun game provides a little bit of challenge. I want to explore this a little bit more. I've only played this a small handful of times, like four or five, so not enough to really give a solid, solid review, but enough to get a good feel for the game. So this one might change throughout the coming months, but right now it's pretty solid. So number 22 is Rolling Realms. This one is, if you know the story, James Stegmaier, did this during the start of the pandemic to make it so that people could easily play remotely at home. And come to think of it, we've been playing remotely for over five years. So we really enjoyed just the meaning behind this game. While I don't necessarily enjoy rolling rights, they tend not to offer a whole lot. This one just, I love the story behind it. And just some of the realms were really interesting. The combinations were cool and the solo version. Now the solo version is where it's at. Like that's where I love this the most. It's the solo, you have these 18 holes that you go through and you have different challenges. At the end of the game, you guys try to see how close to par you were. So it's really cool. I really enjoy that. Uh, you can just play one hole at a time. If you only have like five minutes, you can play a hole and then go on to the next one when you get another chance. It provides those realms that are perfectly paired together because sometimes when you're playing the normal multiplayer, those realms can be not so funly paired. So it's just not quite as enjoyable as it could be other times. But while that is kind of a rare instance, especially now that we have the Terra Mystica promo and we're gonna get more promos later on, they tend to have better combinations. I just, I really like the competing against yourself and competing against what par should be and preset holes with just different goals. Number 21, now this was a Kickstarter game, so we got to play it with a tabletop simulator. So I'm not one that enjoys the tabletop simulator. I definitely like playing on a physical table. So bear that in mind that this might be a, ranked a little bit lower than it would be with a physical game but that's what the only version I had to play. So we'll see when I get a copy because I believe I backed this on Kickstarter, which I'm going to be doing a Games I Backed this year Kickstarter video. So keep an eye for that one. But I mean, it's a very solid game where you're just going around space, trying to get different uh, controls of areas. You can move different directions depending on which layer you're in. And it has a lot of science ideas behind it. They did try to apply some actual real world physics and science concepts into their game. So it is a really interesting one. Number 20 is another prototype we got. Uh, it's a one card wonder. Uh, should be coming out next year. Board Game Geek still listed as 2021, but it's not out yet. So we'll be expecting it next year. But this is a really cool one. You get one card, imagine the title. Uh, and then you're just building up. You're trying to get the resources you need to be able to build up this wonder that you get. It's a really cool, neat little game. I had a blast with it. We did, I don't know if we did a live playthrough of this or if we just did a recorded playthrough, but there's a playthrough on our channel for this one. And it's just a lot of fun, a lot of coolness. Number 19, this, I don't know how people who are not fans of Doctor Who would feel about this one. You get different locations based on the different uh, episodes of Doctor Who. You get, I waited until, because when I found out that the game was a really good game, Doctor 13 was already there. So I was hoping that they would update the cover. So patience paid off because I was able to get Jody on the cover of the game, which to me is amazing because I've always wanted a female doctor. And now we have one. 
But yeah, but the game itself, like, you're just going around resolving it. You roll dice to see if you are successful or not. You can have companions that can help you manipulate those dice. They can make you better in some situations than others. If you're a Doctor Who fan, this is a good one. It's a great one. I'm not quite sure I would love to play this with my friends in New York because they've watched one episode of Doctor Who. Um, and I, it was the one with the plastic, you know, the, the, um, when Rose was first coming with the doctor, so not the best episode to watch, but still, hopefully they heard that Dr. 13 was fantastic, addressed a lot of social issues that we've been dealing with, so maybe they will fall in love with Dr. Who and retroactively watch it, but for now, maybe we could get their opinion from a non-Whovian, you think? My number 18 is Floriferous. Now, this is a beautiful game. I absolutely adore it. I want to play the multiplayer a little bit more before I do an actual review. Uh, I've played the solo a lot, love the solo, and I just, it's a beautiful game where you're trying to collect sets and collect different things, like you get different gold cards, you have to choose during the game if you're going to get one of the normal cards that can score you points at the end based on the other things, or if you want to get one of the cards that lets you score. So you constantly that constant push and pull and where you are on one row or, you know, based on where you're at in one determines how early essentially you get to go in the next column. I really, really want this last one, but oh my goodness, I need that very first one. So should I just go first this round so that I can get that one that I really need? Ah, but it's, ah, I just, I really enjoy it. It has that good tension while it still feels relaxing and the artwork is just stunningly beautiful. And number 17 is actually a roll and write, another roll and write. Yeah, I know I said I didn't like roll and writes, but this one, it, basically the only reason why it's roll and write is because there would have to be tons of these tiny little buildings that you would have to have in different shapes and different colors to be able to place down. That That's basically the reason because what you do is you get a lot of resources and you spend them however you want based on the dying rolling of course uh and part of the way you can spend them is by building the buildings which is you drawing on this board and marking it as your own hence why you would need a lot of the different buildings in a lot of different colors so this is definitely one that definitely shines as a roll and write because it doesn't really feel like a roll and write. And it's definitely a resource management game. I really enjoyed it. Uh, we played it with the Gladiators expansion, which was a perfect integration. So if you can pick both of them up, I would definitely recommend it because Gladiators really added that extra oomph that you really want for the game. And number 16 is Vault Robot Battle Arena. So this is a 2014 game. So yeah, I'm like definitely enjoying the later ones. Uh, but this is one where you are programming your robot, you roll the dice and then you put them and then you try to get your opponents into the holes and get the different coins, or not coins, uh, whatever the goal is for that round. And you just do that over and over and over again and hope to come out ahead by the end. It's a lot of fun. I actually enjoy the quick pushing someone into a hole and making them get hurt or trying to get them health down so that you can just win by just getting rid of them. And then number 15, this is another tabletop simulator last resort. So really enjoyed it. You're getting money that you can spend on getting specific cars that you can put into your spaceship. You want to have certain resorts spaces open because they'll get you more up more on the tracks at the end of the round. But they're also the lowest ones. So if you have a malfunction, which is when you just match with another player on what you want to do for the round, they'll go in those lowest spots. So do you cover them up with something because they'll save you a lot of money right now? Or do you hope that you don't malfunction in order to keep that space open? Interesting push and pull with that one. This was on Kickstarter. Hopefully it will come back soon because I would really like to back this one. So keep your eye out for that one. And number 14 is Imaginarium. Brunica Thala does it again. It does have some interesting artwork, as you can see. It has real pictures that they steampunkify. The only one that really bothers me is the grinder. It's like teeth and it's weird and it's like right on the board. So I'm always happy when a card gets placed on top of that. Uh, but other than that, it's a good resource management game. It feels 
really unique really with the artwork just adds to that and then it has these gorgeous busts that all they are are markers for where you're going to buy or get resources for that round but they're just gorgeous busts so those are amazing and definitely a well-produced thing you're just building your engine up and hoping to come out ahead it's a race to I think 25 points 50 points something like that it's a race to a certain amount of points at the end of that round you add up the points whoever has the most is the winner number 13 is 1960 the making of the president so this is one that I really have been interested in the theme for a while now uh, for a few years actually but it always seemed to be a little bit heavier than what my comfort zone was but then we played uh, the 20, 2008 campaign manager kitty and i played that one absolutely adored it thought well you know 1960 is only like a tiny step above this why don't we give it a try so we got the game played it absolutely adore it the only reason why this one might not get to the table a whole lot in the future is just the time commitment uh granted it was a learning game but our first game took like four and a half hours now it's like an hour and a half two and a half hours somewhere in that range that we can expect to play the game but it's still a lot of fun you get a lot of history packed in there the cards are actually thematic for what they can do and you get little historical facts at the very bottom. If you're Kennedy, you want that Nixon's knee. You want to make it so that Nixon has to really struggle for a turn. Number 12 is a retheme. This is Promenade, which I think Promenade came out in 2019, but Art Deco wasn't available. Like we just got it in a couple months ago or a month ago, something like that. Not very long. Like it's one that I have been really wanting to play simply because it's an art theme and it's deck building which I love deck building and art theme is one of my favorite themes. The only thing that was really disappointing about this game was while the art had no impact on the game, literally the only thing that mattered on the card was what type of art it was. But there were a lot of repeats in the individual art and I would have liked to have seen just all unique artwork. Although I feel like that was probably a decision made because of price point would probably be my guess. But it was just, as a consumer, it's an art-themed game. I would rather see multiple pieces because you place them in the gallery. There's a possibility that you will have two of the identical pieces in the gallery. Why would you go to a museum that just has duplicated pieces? So it's like, there'd be times that I'd be like, oh, well, I have this. Oh, but that artwork is already in the museum. So I really don't want to place this one. Is there any other one that I could place just for thematic reasons? But then sometimes you do have to place a duplicate just because that's what gets you the most points and your other options are very limited. But it is a really good game. really like it. Hopefully I just got it for Brixby for Christmas. So hopefully we'll be able to play it remotely and we're talking about playing games on Christmas Day, just streaming them. So we're talking about maybe possibly streaming this one, which fingers crossed we can do that. We'll see. The number 11 is Unforgiven, the Lincoln Assassination Trial. So this one, it feels very similar to Seven Wonders Duel, but it's all about the Lincoln assassination. So you're trying to get the jurors on your side by drafting these cards over here getting benefits that can get you the juries that are in your hand or these public jurors and then you're trying to move the guilty innocent track up back and forth so it's a really interesting game and have to admit i really want to play this one really soon again kitty the last time we played kicked my behind and i need to redeem myself so now we are in the top 10. number 10 is one that we got to play a prototype copy of and I've heard now that there's a campaign based, so I'm like, I really want to try to play that campaign when that comes out, so I'm really excited for that. But this is one that as soon as we played it, Kitty fell in love with it and absolutely, like, they played it on a tabletop simulator and absolutely loved it. So the uh, Tim Ferry, the third, went ahead and sent Bricks and Kitty a copy in New York so that we could play it on the actual table and I got to play it on that version and it was amazing like you wouldn't think so just looking at it, it looks like a board and it's like okay lots of hexes but then you get your ships which you can only get your ships at the very beginning of the game so it's very once you've spent your money on your ships you're done but money can make it so that you can do stuff like shooting other ships 
you need money for those cannonballs. So you kind of have to save a tiny bit for the beginning, but you also really want more ships. So it's that push and pull. And then you're just trying to either eliminate all of your opponents or take uh, possession of enough islands. So I do really enjoy that one. Uh, number nine is Bomb Squad Academy. So this is a really good push your luck game. What you do is you're playing cards for colors for basically like which ones you want to cut, I think the theme is. Uh, but then you, based on who does what color, and you'll go in order the ones that can go farther or last. And if someone causes the bomb to get activated, the round's over. But whoever, like if there were two people that played on blue, you would draw two cards and move that forward. If you don't cause the bomb to go off, then you get a certain amount of points based on the cards that were already there, which is really interesting. And you can play a chicken because you're too scared to do it. But then if a bomb does go off, you get some money back. If it doesn't, then you can look at cards to see what's coming or to see possibly where the bombs would get set off at so that you have a little bit more knowledge on basically what color you want to play next. Number eight is Between Two Castles of Mad King Ludwig. So this is one that we played just because we had gotten onto Stonemaier games, like really started enjoying because when Red Rising came out, which we will see in a few, but we started really wondering about some of those other games because I had already had Scythe and Viticulture and Wingspan and really loved those. So I wanted to see what others they had done. And we saw this and Tile Land game, huh? Well, we could probably play that remotely. So actually I had gotten on and I was able to get a review copy of this. Thank you, Jamie, for that. So we got the review copy. We played it, absolutely adored it. Brixie and Kitty ended up buying a copy for them. And then when the expansion Secrets and Sorays came out, we were also able to get that as a review copy. So thank you again, Jamie. I was able to play that and just added some more rooms and some more things that made it a little bit more interesting. But it's just the way you could determine which castle you should put which tile and which tile you should choose or pass on because if you pass on a tile that's perfect for your opponent's tile like in a three player game they're also working on a castle together which you don't want that castle to do good you want your two castles to do good because you're scoring on your lower castle so you don't want them to be too far out of whack but you also don't want that castle to go super high so i have to take this castle piece which is absolutely worthless for me so which where where do i place it it's just those decisions are just super high in this game and i really enjoy it my number seven is terraforming mars Ares expedition this one is kind of a terraforming mars killer for me it gives me that same feel in a shortened amount of time so yeah, I'll probably play this one over Terraforming Mars, but this one also has, uh, what is it from the card selection? Ah, that space game. It'll come to me after I do this video probably, but it has that where you select what card you want to have activated. And so you get a special ability with that one, but everyone else gets to do that action. So if you know someone else has to make money, you can play a different card so that way you could do something more beneficial to you and still be able to make some money. So I just, I really like that interesting push and pull and then just all the card variations are just super cool. And just, I enjoy this one. Number six is Ankh. And I actually do kind of like the merging, which I know is a really weird one, but it's just, it just adds something new and different, which, new and different can be bad but i feel in this instance it's actually kind of good it makes you have to think harder because man there's a possibility that if i'm second to last if there's a possibility that i could get further up and pass the one that's just above me i'm not gonna have to merge but oh that's gonna be risky because it would be a lot easier if i just tried to help the one that is in last place so that way when we do merge i'm not hurt so much so that, when you're in that position, that tension is really good. And then once the merge happens, that first place is not guaranteed first place. Like that merge can just fly up there and just really, uh, really hurt the first player. So if you're in a three player game and all your scores are really, really tight, that first player person 
has to work really hard to maintain their lead after that merge happens because it becomes a lot more complex for them. And then the two player game is a really interesting area control and it's just, it's just enjoyable. I love the ancient Egyptian theme. I love the different minis. I mean, they've been a joy to paint and this mammoth of a character, <laughs> definitely fun to play with. Number five is Red Rising. So I actually got into the book because of this game. I was like, well, you know, some of our games, they have a good reputation of their games. I wonder if I could get into this theme. Because if I could get into this theme, that's an insta buy. So I went ahead and I got Red Rising the book. And needless to say, I fell in love with it. I cannot wait until book six comes out. Hopefully this next year. <laughs> Fingers crossed. But the game itself, once you've read the books, you can really tell the relationships between the characters. And you're like, ah, I know what that person did. And oh, I know why you're that power. Really like that. And then the game itself is fun where you're playing a card, doing its power, or drawing from a deck and playing it and just doing the action from where you're playing it. So it's just, it's really interesting. You're left with the cards that you want at the end and that's how you score. But you also score based on your uh, institute level and your fleet and how much of the actual helium you get. And I found it interesting that everything ended at seven because while the, the legit reason was because it was gameplay related, I found a thematic reason too because there were originally seven houses named in the book. So I found that to be a cool accidental little nod to the book itself. So yeah, it was totally because of the book. That's the reason why it's seven. Number four, Euphoria Build a Better Dystopia. Fell in love with it. This is another one that I got because, wow, Stonemaier games are really awesome. Let's see if I can play this one. I fell in love with it, got, got it on the table. Bricks and Kitty, we played it remotely at first. They loved it so much that they got their own copy of it. Although I don't think they got the expansion for it. But the expansion, basically you can just like change out cards. But you have these, it's a basic resource management game. But your workers are your dice and you roll them. But you want to keep your workers a little on the stupid side. Because if they get too smart, they'll leave you. And all the work you got to recruit that worker, to train that worker, to really bring that worker to fruition is lost. Dang it. So you really feel the struggle of wanting to get lots of workers because, oh my goodness, you can do so much. But you also want to roll the high dice because you can do more with the higher dice. But if you roll a lot of high dice with a lot of workers, you're going to lose them because you can only have so much intelligence before they get smart enough to find a different job. I mean, it is the employee's market right now. But I just, I really enjoy this one. I really enjoy that the Subterrians, they have plenty of water, but they're kind of starving. So they're trying to dig their way up to the farm. The farmers, they have plenty of food, but they're kind of in the dark ages. They don't have any electricity. So they're trying to go over to, real quick, just want to say, the Euphorians are the ones with electricity and the Icarites are the ones that I'll be talking about in a bit. But just keep that in mind. Euphorians area to get electricity, while the Euphorian areas, they're like running in those circles. They need water to drink because they're getting dehydrated. So they're trying to dig down to the Subterrians and then there's... Oh, no, it wasn't Euphorians, because Euphorians are in the air. Uh, what, what, what are they called? They're the ones that make the electricity. But the ones that are in the air, they get bliss because they're very, um, very high up in the air. They get whatever they need because all of these strugglers are just changing out their resources for that bliss because they need to keep happy. So they get all the food, they get all the water, they get all the electrical that they need. Maybe they're like, the lords of the universe. But just increasing those charts on this, getting resources, getting benefits. It's just, it's a really interesting game that I wish I would have discovered sooner. But it is in my collection now. I'm going to enjoy it for years to come. My number three, Pandemic Legacy Season Zero. Wow, there's not a lot that I can say that's not spoilery. So basic introduction stuff. 
you are against the Soviets because they're sending out spies. You're trying to clean them up, clean them up, trying to build teams to control them so they can go around and kind of take care of them, take them and send them back to Russia. That, that's what the purpose is of the teams gathering them up. That's what I'm going with. Um, but you also, you get certain tasks based on the CDC because you just graduated medical school. And so the C or CIA, not CDC, the CIA decided it would be easier to train those medical students to become spies than it would be to train spies to become medical students. Because what we're trying to prevent, we're trying to prevent season one from happening. We want to discover the virus that is going to plague the world. And so we're trying to find the people that have researched this. We're trying to find the people that have, you know, possibly have anything to do with this. That's the main concept of the game. And you go around to do stuff and you do things and you have fun and it is so good, but it's not as good as my next two. My number two is Tapestry. So Brixie got this for me for my birthday and absolutely fell in love with it. So we got the Plants and Ploys expansion and then we also got a review copy of the Arts and Architecture expansion. So that was amazing as well. And just this game, you are just building up your civilization. You're going up on these tracks and it's interesting because the science and technology track work well together and the military and exploration track work well together and then the arts track that is in the newest expansion works well with any of them so it's just it's really interesting to just see how the different strategies work because it's kind of based on your leader to kind of focus you on what you want to do for the round or for the game not the round based on the tapestry cards that you get those determine your focus for the round but based on the power that you get for your leader, you might want to really focus on military or you might really want to focus on technology based on what you get every round from your leader's ability kind of determines how you want to focus throughout your game. And then you're just trying to build up your city so that you can get the rows and the columns so that you can get when you fill an area, you get a, a just a three by three grid. On the base game the arts and architectures adds a little variety to that but if you feel that you get a resource of your choice if you have the rows and columns full you get victory points at the end of the round so it's just it's really interesting to see how you exactly want to go do you want to go for the easy one across or do you want to go for this really easy square that you can complete really quick because oh my goodness i need one more resource i just need one more but there you have it and then my number one game that i discovered this year is unmatched wide variety of ips wide variety of just ways the game plays and shines really i started with cobble and fog up there absolutely adored it uh bricks and kitty they started with buffy and then we just started gathering them all up because it was just really interesting to see the push and the pulls and how the decks kind of competed against the other. My boyfriend Jerome and I are doing an unmatched death match essentially where we're just competing against each other. We're just grabbing two of them. Whoever wins that round goes on to the next round. We're just having a lot of fun with it. And then once the new uh, Battle of Legends Volume 2 comes out, cannot wait that's it that is my 31 games for this year that i have played that are new to me what have been new to you what games have really shined for you this year have you played these one or are there any ones on this list that you really want to get to the table let me know in the comments below but until next time just remember to have fun be present and be you Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to us. We would love to hear from you. Also, if you find value in our content, please like, comment, or subscribe. Let a friend or family member know that we exist. Help us spread our channel and bring remote gaming to a table near you. Thank you very much, and have a great day.